I was needing to bend some copper bus bar for a CD welder I'm building. So I went looking for a cheap bender that would handle 1 8 inch thick copper bar and would do some close offset bends. After searching a bit, this one from Amazon looked like it was worth a try. It is the Avos tool, I have no idea if that's how it's pronounced, Mini Universal Bender, part number 11-0043A. There are quite a few of these mini benders on Amazon that look quite similar, ranging from a little over $50 to a little under $100. So I picked the cheapest one that shipped from Amazon. It's packed nicely, everything in its place in foam, and with plenty of rust prevention oil on the tool itself. The description on Amazon gives the pin and die dimensions in inches, but they are in fact metric. The pin sizes are 5mm, 6mm, and 13mm, and the four circle dies go from 25mm to 40mm in 5mm increments. It has two holes in the base bar to mount on a bench, or it can just be clamped in a vise, which is how I'm going to use it. First, I'm going to test some 1 8 inch thick aluminum as that will be the closest thing to the copper that I need it for, and I'm not about to test on copper. One thing that was lacking from the information about the benders was the smallest dimensions that could be bent. About the shortest leg this will handle with the dies that it comes with is about 3 quarters of an inch, and the shortest 45 degree offset I could get was just a little over 5 eighths of an inch. That's a little longer than I wanted, but it will do. The first couple of bends revealed a problem. It is hard to see on camera, but there is quite a twist to the bend. Most of the twist is coming from the sloppiness of the handle. There is just way too much clearance in the slot the handle goes in. About 0.04 inches of clearance to put a number on it. So the first modification is going to be adding the right thickness washer to fix the handle. I lap down a bronze washer to about 0.041 inches thick, making for a very tight fit. It would have been nice to have the washer on top, but it had to go under the handle to keep the handle block at the same height as the clamp surface. Fixing the play in the handle removed most of the twist occurring in the bends. There is still some slop in the pins themselves. The handle does bend some, and the center pin is not quite square, but it is now quite usable. Let's do a quick teardown and see how it's put together. The bar of the handle is 5 mm thick and has a block welded to it to hold a pin. The entire tool is made mostly of rectangular bar, drilled and tapped, with a piece of threaded rod with a plastic knob to finish it off. It really is a neat made tool. The whole thing is held together with cap screws. The flat bars that hold the movable jaw in place have been ground down to leave a 5 mm lip on the bottom. The threaded rod is held to the jaw with a dog point set screw. Now the bars that hold the center pin are just clamped together with two cap screws. So if the holes for the center pin are drilled square, I might be able to put it back together and end up with a square center pin. Of course the spacer for the handle is 6 mm thick which is where all the sloppiness in the handle comes from. When the holes are lined up, the top bar is about 0.01 inches shorter than the bottom bar, so I'll cut a shim for that. Though keeping the holes aligned when tightening the screws that clamp the bars together is going to be the key. I may have to make an oversized pin to do it right, but I'll try to skip that as I'm ready to get it back together and see if it will do what I need it to do. Just going to put a couple of bins in some 1 16th inch thick aluminum and see how much twist there is. This thinner bar won't cause the handle to bend much, so it should give a good indication of how square I got things back together. Very little twist, I'm pleased with that. Let's try some 3 16 inch soft steel rod and see how it does. Looks like it does a nice tight bend.
the angle blocks work pretty well too. Can just bend this all over the place. I think it would handle quarter inch steel rod just fine. Now let's try some 1 8 inch by half inch steel bar. If it can do this, it will be fine for the copper bus bars. I can feel the handle bend a bit as I'm putting pressure on it, so this might be close to the limit for this thing. Not bad though. Well, let's try to do the copper bus bars. The copper I'm using is an eighth of an inch thick and three quarters of an inch wide. The bars are a little over five and a half inches long. It is taking a good bit of pressure to get it to bend. Not as much as the eighth by half inch steel, but close to that. And I need to bend an offset in them. The offset has to clear another three quarter inch wide copper bar. So I'm going for a one and a half inch offset length at the bottom. Here is where, if the movable jaw had a narrower width, I could have had a shallower offset. I tried using the smaller pins to do an offset, and it did make for an offset a little over a quarter of an inch. But with the rounded pins, it just rounded the bar too much, and I have to have flat ends. So I'll live with the deeper offset for now. Yes, I'm pretty happy with that. Now just have to make two more. All right, first, does anyone happen to know if this is maybe a copy of an old tool design? Second, my conclusion on this mini bender. Fit and finish, I would say poor. Price, I would say excellent. Cost less than $60 delivered to my door. On would I buy it again? Unquestionably, yes. Great bang for the buck with one caveat. If you're going to be bending flat items, you will need a spacer to hold the handle square. It would be interesting to know if the higher price ones of these had a thicker handle. Thanks for watching and have fun bending.